Now that we've worked out our mathematical representation for the sample and hold, that is, using the Z-transform, let's employ this to model physical systems. So we want to look at the transfer function for digital control systems. Now, typically for our plant, the output will be a continuous signal. But we only are concerned with the output of our plant at specific sampling times. So what we want to do is imagine a sampled output that is synchronous with the input. So here is our continuous system and here we have a sampled input to our system. And so now in this case we want to imagine this sampled output. And so the transfer function for this system is just the transfer function for the plant, so g of z in the z domain, and then the input in the z domain, so the product of those two. In order to find this transfer function, we need to be able to determine the plant's transfer function in the z-domain. And so this is oftentimes some g1 of s, so a transfer function that's in cascade with a zero order hold. And remember this is the transfer function for a zero order hold. Uh, the quotient 1 minus e to the negative ts over s. So we need to determine g of z in order to get this transfer function here. So if we can find out the input in the z domain, then in order to get the transfer function we need, or in order to get the output, excuse me, in order to get the output we need the system in the z domain, so g of z. And assuming that we have some g1 of s in cascade with a zero order hold, we can find the transfer function as shown in this example. So we have g1 of s is equal to s plus 3 over s plus 5. And this looks like, and so for our complete system we have the zero order hold and then we have G1 of S. So this is G of S. Now, we know the transfer function for the zero order hold. So G of S is the product of that transfer function times G1 of S. So we have 1 minus e to the negative ds over s multiplied by g1 of s. And this is equal to we can just move the s in the denominator over to here. And then to find g of z we substitute for the z here. We have 1 minus, uh, I'm sorry, z negative 1 times the z transform of g1 of s over s. So we need to find the z transform of this function. And we'll call that uh, g2. And that is equal to s plus 3 over s times s plus 5 and this is equal to a over s plus b over s plus 5 using partial fraction expansion and we can find a by multiplying both sides by s and then evaluating with at s equals 0 so a is equal to s plus 3 over s plus 5 evaluated at s equals 0 which gives us 0.6 and b is 
s plus 3 over s evaluated at s equals negative 5, which is 2 fifths. So negative 2 over negative 5 is 2 fifths, which is 0.4. So g2 of s is equal to 0.6 over s plus 0.4 over s plus 5. So now we need to find the z transform of this function. So g2 of z, and we can use the z transform table. So looking at that table, g2 of z, I should have had this up on a slide, but it's table 13.1. All right, so that is, um, so 1 over s is z over z minus 1. So we have 0.6z over z minus 1. And then s plus a gives you z minus e to the negative at. So we have 0.4 z over z minus e to the negative 5t. Okay. We want to get g2 of z in a different form. And so this is equal to 0.6z times z minus e to the negative 5t plus 0.4z times z minus 1 divided by z minus 1 times z minus e to the negative 5t. And so that's equal to 0.6z squared Okay, so there's g2 of z. We have z squared minus 0.6, uh, minus the sum of 0.6 times e to the negative 5t and 0.4, and then that sum is multiplied by z, and then that's divided by this product z minus 1 and z minus e to the negative 5t. All right, so back to where we were. g of z is equal to 1 minus z inverse times the z transform of g2. So times g2 of z. So g of z is equal to, and 1 minus z the negative 1 is equivalent to z minus 1 over z. So we have z minus 1 over z times g2 of z. Um, and that ends up being z minus So canceling out the z over here and the z minus 1 from here. Okay, so there is g of z. So in this example, we used a zero order hold in cascade with a transfer function in the frequency domain and found the transfer function of that sampled time system in the z domain. And this is the result. And it started off by knowing the transfer function of a zero order hold. And then we substitute in a value for t, which is the sampling period, and we end up with the answer z minus 0.449 divided by z minus 0.0821. And we could do this in MATLAB. 
So there are many ways that you can define transfer functions in MATLAB. Here's one. G1, we could say S is equal to transfer function S. And then G1 is S plus 3 over S plus 5. And so that gives us this transfer function, G1. And then we can convert this continuous time transfer function to a discrete time. So now we have G and is equal to C2D of G1. So the arguments here, we have the transfer function, we have the sampling period, and then we have the hold. So this is cascade with a zero order hold. And MATLAB will give us the same result. And so we have this sample time of 0.5 seconds um, for our discrete time transfer function. So this is the step to go from the continuous systems that are in control systems, the first class, to systems that have sampled time data or digital control systems.